All right, we're back. Talking horse racing. Horse power. P-S-N. I'm your host, Greg De Palma, and joining me once again this week, fresh off a double winning exacta bonanza last week over at Churchill Downs, is the one and only John Hardoon from the Rigas and Sheets. How's it going, John? Good, Greg. How are you? Good. So that went well last week. Yeah, it's nice when you like a thirty-dollar horse and they actually win. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you got the exact and everything else with it, so no complaints. Hopefully, the listeners made some money. Yeah, and and by the way, that fourteen to one shot uh, we gave was on uh, Patreon. So hopefully, well, we know the Patreon uh, members were able to take advantage of it, uh, and uh, it was also nice because. It was a nice little uh, come from behind win. Uh, that was happy is a choice. And he's a closer. So uh, that was expected. But it was really nice to see him kind of come from behind him because the favorite, who was it? The uh, Skelly. It looked yeah. like, you know, you, you kind of figured Skelly was out front. All right, you know, it's over. But you could just tell. And of course, the announcer was saying it. He was fading fast. He just doesn't uh, finish races like he used to. You know, he just, I don't know if he's waiting on horses or maybe, you know, he's lost a step, but he's certainly not the same horse. He had no excuse really to get beat, to be honest with you. But uh, the horse we liked actually won, and that was a good thing. Yeah, that's what is that now? Three straight for Skelly uh, being first down the stretch and finishing second. So yep. not good for Skelly, but hey, like you said, it's good for us, including the Exacta. And then in the uh, 10th race, the grade three race, uh, that was the race, as you mentioned, was the early Derby points race. And uh, that was uh, another winner, a dominating Jonathan's win, way. actually. Yeah, Jonathan's away. We saw the race in Saratoga. He was great that day. And uh, last week, second start, he actually got out of the gate, never in doubt. They bet the, the heck out of him. He was 9-2 to two morning line. I think he paid four and change, so. Maybe they took all their money from the race before and sent it in <laughs> on the next race. So what did, did, did you uh, happen to know what his number was? Because he was a 12, which was pretty impressive for a first go around. And yeah, I, I, I got to imagine it was nine. better than that. I think he ran a nine. Okay. Uh, usually they put the numbers up Thursday afternoon, but now we're taping early. So yeah, okay. maybe you'll post it up on the board later or something. So there you I'll go. Like Jonathan's way. Uh, maybe a very early, very early, early, early Derby contender. Long way to go, though. So yeah, only nine months away. You know, it's a, it's silly to be running point races for points <laughs> at this point because it's, I could guarantee you, if any of the horses in that race, maybe two or three of them will be around by Derby time. Who knows? This game, you need a lot of luck and a lot of patience. All right, we want to remind everybody to subscribe to the channel because this is the way that you're going to make sure that all of the races are available on YouTube. We got to hit that 1,000 subscriber mark. Um, and uh, look, we, we, there might be some uh, other changes. Uh, uh, we haven't really had time. The reason is, as you can see, Chad is not here. And that is because, uh, as we said last week, Chad was busy on a trip. And, uh, you know, Chad's just very busy. And as you can tell, we've had a very difficult time. Uh, well, maybe you can or can't tell, but, you know, trying to schedule things. So uh, just felt, uh, Chad felt it was the time to kind of just step away. Uh, and hopefully we'll have Chad back again if he kind of, you know, reju rejuice himself. Uh, I know he'll miss it because we all had a good time with him. He was great as a handicapper. Uh, it was awesome to have his expertise, of course, as a trainer, on the, uh, you know, being able to let us know what's going on uh, on the track. Uh, before races and warm-ups, things of that nature. Uh, but, yeah, it was great having him on, and I'm sure we'll, we'll have him on again at some point. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I, was, I, I just was very happy that we were able to take advantage of the opportunity we had with him. Yeah, he brought plenty of good stuff to the show. He gave us a view from the backside, so people like that. We'll miss him, but that's the way it goes. Yep. So we'll uh, we'll let you know about any uh, potential programming uh, changes along the way. Again, this just uh, came about the last uh, 24 hours, so uh, we will let you know. But everything is still the same. So please subscribe. All that's important. And if you want, again, it's just five dollars a month. You click the Patreon link. You sign up. If you are unhappy for whatever reason, you can uh, just you know stop uh, stop your subscription at Patreon for five dollars for the month and that's it no strings attached and there's no strings attached as well with subscribing okay 
So let's go ahead and let everybody know what we're doing today. And that's going to be talking about parks racing. And we have the Pennsylvania Derby on Saturday. So that's actually going to be race 13. Race 14 is going to be the bonus race. Uh, and that's the one that's going to be available on Patreon. So we're actually going to start with our YouTube audience uh, with the Pennsylvania Derby. And this is going to go off a little after 6, 6.10 on Saturday. The weather looks fine. Uh, mile and an eighth. And again, a million dollar race for three-year-olds. So the morning line favorite, John, is Stronghold. So he's on the outside at 11. No, no, no. The morning line favorite for it is the seven, Dragoon Guard, the bred cox horse. Oh, okay. So the seven is, okay. So Dragoon Guard is at nine to five. Stronghold's at five to two. And... Um, yeah, and, and, and it was interesting because even though Stronghold is, is a slight second choice, he, he doesn't have any single digits on the, on the sheet numbers. So um, are you surprised that he was the second choice? Uh, that he's the second choice, no, because, you know, he ran second uh, in the Indiana Derby. Ran, uh, you know, he's been running in big stake races. He won the Santa Anita Derby. He, he, he's he's a good horse in California. The question is, is he going to be a good horse here against these horses? You know, at, at five to two, there's really no big deal about uh, Stronghold. I think Dragoon Guard is a much better horse yeah. personally. He's got five starts, four wins. But for the radio, we're going to find another horse, and we're going to find a price play again in here. I think uh, it's not as easy as Dragoon Guard and Stronghold. I think there are other horses that have legitimate chances. I agree with that. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first three horses, it looks like. Uh, by, by the way, just one thing before we start. You know, this is an interesting race because you usually get horses that ran in the Derby and ran well in the Derby show up at this race. You know, it's horses that didn't quite make it back in time for the uh, Travers and the Haskell. They'll show up here. And some horses that have even run in the Travers and Haskell in the past have come back and run here. That's not the case this year. So for that reason, I think it's – you don't have the Sierra Leones. You don't have the fiercenesses in here. So this opens the race up and makes it a better betting race, I think, for the public. And we start – actually, if you take a look at uh, – well, the one, first of all, it's a 12-1 to shot. It ran a 9 in April. Other than that, it's coming in with three straight 11s, even though he's finished first or second in, what, his last nine races? Yeah, well – He's only ran nine races. Exactly. So he's never, he's, ne he's never been off the board. You know, uh, Mike Maselli's the trainer. He's getting Jose Ortiz today. I guess Javier Castellano is still out with some sort of injury. You know, the horse is OK, but I think you have better options. And the two. So this is one of those horses that you were talking about in a way because the sees the gray horse is a Preakness winner. Uh, who ran, of course, in the Belmont and a bunch of other big Kentucky Derby prep uh, and uh, uh, overall Kentucky Derby races. So five to one, ran a nine in the Preakness win. But then after that, came back to his normal numbers, 14 and then 11. Yeah, the thing about this horse is he got very lucky on Preakness Day at Pimlico. The track came up sloppy, and he got to walk on the lead that day. And uh, that's not going to be the situation. The weather's supposed to be beautiful on Saturday. He moves up on a wet track if it happens to rain, but I don't want any part of this horse at 5-1. to one. Yeah, and the 3 is just too slow. Is that? Uh... Yeah. Okay. Uh, the 4... Now the four uh, is an interesting horse here. Uh, I definitely want to put this horse in the, in in the uh, in the exact as timeout at ten to one with Rosario on board. He's been on board the last two, uh, which have both been in the money, and also been at this distance, which is nice. He also has two nines in his last three races. So considering the nines, the ten to one in the money, uh, it seems like a really good play to try to see if we can make some money with this horse. Yeah, this is going to be my top selection. He's lightly raced, only five career starts, but he's really getting better. I like the fact that he came right back to that nine last time out. Three races back, he ran the nine at Aqua, ended up going long. Two starts back, I guess he bounced off of the nine. But the fact that he came back last time to that nine at Saratoga, the only question I have is that the only bad race in the last three races was two starts back without Lasix. He's not going to get to run on Lasix Saturday. But the fact that he's 10 to 1 or anywhere near that price, this is the right horse to be king in here. 
All right. Next up is the five protective and protective ran a nine, two starts back 15 last time out. And that's when he broke his maiden. So you do get a red Ortiz junior on board. Um, Todd Pletcher training, but uh, you know, they, they paid a you know a decent amount of money for the horse. He only has one win out of seven. Hasn't won at this distance. I don't know. I mean, the only good thing in my mind is that he's eight to one. Yeah, the funny thing about this horse is two races back at nine, three races back at 11, four races back at 10. He didn't win with any of those races. Yeah. Yeah. He ran the 15 and he won. Yeah. I, I, as a general rule, I don't like playing horses that won their last race with bad numbers because you lose all value. You know, but that being said, I don't really like him here. Yeah, and, and he was a heavy favorite. So does that mean that that was a pretty bad field? Yeah, well, it was a maiden field, and listen, he ran in the Belmont, he ran in the Peter Pan, he ran in the Wood Memorial. You don't see maidens running those races. That's why he was one to five or one to nine last time out. Any chance that that was a a reaction to the nine, and that you can say, well, maybe he'll revert back to the fact that he was headed in the right direction before that? You absolutely can. Listen, it was a paceless race last time out. It was a race, by the way, that was scheduled for the turf and it came off the turf. He may have been entered for main track only. I'm not sure. But in any case, listen, he figures to make a forward move off the 15. The problem is I don't think he's going to be long enough. He never goes off a big price. Yeah. I know he's listed at 8-1. to one. I guess he's on the bubble. I mean, he's like a lot of other horses in the race. He's kind of like the one. You know, and he's going to be like other horses that we get to as we go on. Okay. Uh, now we've got a 15-to-1 shot that appears a little slow. Uh, he has run a 12 and a 13 his last two, but that's just uh, too slow at this point. Doesn't belong here. The only thing he has going for him is he is – this is his home track. You know, he, he trains here. He races here. So sometimes the hometown horses move up, but I don't like this horse. Okay, now here's Dragoon Guard, the 9-5 to five, uh, morning line favorite. Cox, Giroux, uh, this year 10, 9, 9, 11, all wins. This is a horse that wants to start and win uh, the race uh, from coast to coast. And the last two races were grade three wins. So Dragoon Guard, uh, again, a good horse, but, I mean, it's not like the sheet numbers are that much better than some of the other horses that we've already talked about with better odds. No, he's got the same nines that the four timeout has. Listen, he's ne he's never really done anything wrong. He has five starts and he's won four races. Take nothing away from him. Who knows how good he really is. When you keep winning, you probably run whatever you have to run to win. So, you know, maybe there's a lot more in the tank. But at nine to five, I just think he's a play. I'm going to use him, obviously, in exactas, but I wouldn't key a horse like this. Can he win? Of course he can win. But uh, the name of the game is value. And there's no real value in playing this horse at six to five. Yeah, just taking a look. Uh, how about the fact that he is uh, he wants that lead? And um, taking a look at the rest of the field, just briefly, uh, is that something that will work in his favor with this group? Uh, can, can it possibly work against him at all? Well, you got 11 horses in the race. I'm sure other horses are going to go. They're not just going to give him an easy lead and say, have a nice day. You yeah. know, I think there are going to be other horses. Sees the gray likes the lead. He likes to show speed. Yeah. He's breaking inside of him. You got to help, obviously, other horses go with him. But again, there's just no value playing yep. this horse at a short price. And one of those horses, by the way, that might uh, battle him right off the gate is the eight. And that is unmatched wisdom. So you got Chad Brown. You have, and here's the interesting thing: that Pratt was on board the first three races, all wins, ran an eight, eight, and eleven, which is very good for your first three races of your career. Then in the Travers, um, I'm sure there was a reason that Ortiz jumped on board yeah. over Pratt. Not sure what it was, but there was a good reason. Pratt went to Sierra Leone. <laughs> there you go. That's the reason. Not that that worked out. Uh, no, but, but this horse actually just never showed up. He got beat 18 lengths uh, that day. Fierceness was great. He put threes together. We know that. Um, you know, he just ran horrible last time out. Obviously, he could rebound today. I would use him underneath. The last race was also a mile and a quarter. Maybe he didn't want to go that far. This is only a mile and an eighth. And reunited with Pratt, and it's Chad Brown, so always dangerous. I don't think you want to eliminate eliminate them so no. fast. Uh, the nine is too slow, correct? Yes. 
All right, the 10 is Uncle Heavy. Boy, we've talked a lot about Uncle Heavy on this show. Uh, we tried to catch him a few times, but all he has is that one. Oh, wait, I'm on the wrong horse. Oh, no. All, yeah, he's just slow. I mean, he's never run better than the 13, you know. He, he never made that step forward. No. And uh, he should have by now. And the fact that he didn't, to me, is a negative sign. Yeah, and then we thought too that after we ran that twelve at the Withers, which was his, uh, which was a high for him, that that was the first step that he was gonna, and and then all, and it, it went backwards. So exactly, uh, and to not win in his last race at short price in a field like that, that was especially at this track, that was the, probably the last nail. Okay. Well, that was a Smarty Jones. He needs probably time off. They need to regroup and decide what they're doing. This is another horse that uh, this trainer does a terrific job. He's been a leading trainer or, you know, a top trainer, certainly at parks for many years. He's well respected, you know, but this horse just doesn't have it. And Michael Sanchez is, uh, he's got to be one of the leading riders. He's at this the leading track. Riding, rider at parks. Him and I guess Paco Lopez, uh, he's hitting at about 25%, which is pretty good. Keep in mind that that 12 he ran at the Withers is still his best sheet number. All right. And then the last one is Stronghold, the 5-2 to two shot. His best runs this year in his career are three tens. One of those tens, as you mentioned, John, was in the Santa Anita Derby win in April. But he's never run a single digit uh, sheet number yet. Still, he's 7 for 8, either first or second. First trip to Parks. Yeah, but it's a five. It's you know he's breaking from the outside. He's five to two. He's breaking from the eleven post, so that has to be a disadvantage, especially uh, at two turns at parks. You know you have a little bit of a run into that first turn, but you don't want to break from the eleven post. And at five to two, you know he's going to have to beat me. I'm not playing him. All righty. So uh, you want to take this first or me? We'll switch it uh, for two races. Which one do you I want first? Think- I like the four timeout. I'm playing exact is with the seven and eight. Four over seven, eight. You can reverse them, obviously, as well. And I... Timeout with Dragoon Guard and Unmatched Wisdom. There you go. Timeout at a 10 to 1 shot. We'll keep our fingers crossed. I think those odds should stay real pretty close to that. Um, and uh, with the seven and the eight. I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going to take a chance with the five protective. Hope that those odds don't drop too much. Over the four, seven, eight. So, of course, we're right there with the 7 and the 8 and the 4. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and throw in the 5 as well as the winner of the race and hope I get 8 to 1. You'll get 8 to 1. All right. Now, let's talk about uh, the race 14. Before we do that, we've got to say goodbye to our YouTube viewers. So, again, check the link in the description. If you can't find it, just hit that little more uh, link. You see where it says more? Basically, you click that and you see a whole big section that pops up. That's where one of the links will be. And I'll try to put a link, of course, in the comment section as well, pinned at the top to make it easy for you to just click and then check out our Patreon page. And you'll be able to uh, find out what we're going to say about this race and also the next three weeks because you get a whole month's worth of uh, races here on Patreon or over there on Patreon. So for you two viewers, uh, again, appreciate it. Don't forget once again to hit subscribe. subscribe. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Uh, I'm not sure. There's a big card next week, isn't there? I was looking ahead. I think there is a big card next week somewhere. There, I'm sure they're sending you. There are races. Yeah. yeah. So there's some really good races next week. So we'll be back for you uh, uh, YouTubers next week.